Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, lesson 14, motion along a line. Search robots again. Okay, classwork opening exercise says part A, if f of t equals the point t comma two times t minus one, find the values of f of zero, f of one, and f of five, and plot them on a coordinate plane. Okay, so let me get my red pen here. And so I like showing all my work, so I substitute it in so I write f of zero equals zero comma two times zero minus one. And that is going to give me the point f of zero equals zero comma two times zero is zero minus one is negative one. So f of zero is zero comma negative one. And I'm going to do the same with the rest. F of one equals t t one comma two times that t or one minus one so f of one is going to be the point one comma two times one is two minus one is one that will be the point one one and then finally f of five is going to equal, well, f of five, five's our t, f of t, t, five time, comma two times five. So it's gonna be five comma two times five minus one. f of five is going to equal the point five comma 10 minus one, nine. So then it says, what is the image of f of t? Well, we would have to plot them on the coordinate plane or find this, find certain things out about this. So if we plot them on the coordinate plane, here's what we get. We get this line here, just to save time, I brought it in, done. So the point zero negative one is right here. And the point one one is here, and the point five one is, or I'm sorry, five nine is here. So up two over one, up two over one, up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. So that is a straight line. I'm on the line with all three points. So the image of f of t is a line. At what time does the graph of the line pass through the y-axis? Well, the y-axis is this one, and it's at the time t zero comma negative one. So it's when we want to know when y is cross, or I'm sorry, what is time does the graph of the line pass through the y-axis? The y-axis is here, and it's when x is negative one. No, it's when y is negative one. It's when y is negative one, x is zero. So at what time? Um, time is t. That's what this t stands for right here. And it's when time is t is zero. So when t is zero. And then y was negative one. When does it pass through the x-axis? Well, the x-axis is right here. So in order to find that, I would have to write the formula f of t, if I didn't graph it anyway, equals t times 2t minus 1. Well, I want the x to be 0. And I want to know what y is. I'm sorry, I want y to be 0. When we're on the x-axis, y is 0. So I want this to equal 0. So if I take 2t minus 1 and set it equal to 0, and I add 1 to both sides, I get 2t equals 1, divide both sides by 2, and I get t equals 1 half. So, and, so f of t or f of 1 half will equal 1 half comma 1 half. 
So when does it pass through the x axis? At time t equals one half. Actually, I have it here already. Okay. All righty. E, part E. Can you write the equation of the line you graphed in slope intercept form? I hope so. So in slope intercept form, you need to know the slope and you need to know the y intercept, which is B. Well, the y intercept is negative one, and I already counted up two over one, up two over one. So my slope is just simply two. So y equals mx plus b is slope y intercept form, and y equals mx plus a negative one or minus one. So the equation of this line is y equals 2x minus one. F says, how does the equation compare with the definition of f of t? So the value of the second coordinate is obtained by taking two times the value of the first coordinate and then subtracting one. Okay. Okay, page two, example one. Programmers want to program a robot so that it moves at a uniform speed along a straight line segment connecting two points A and B. So if A is the point zero, negative one, and B is the point one, one, and the robot travels from A to B in one minute, A, where is the robot at time T equals zero? Well, that's the starting point A. It is at the point zero comma negative one. Where's the robot at time T equals one? Well, that's one minute later, time one, and that's the point B, one comma one. Okay, so now it says draw a picture that shows where the robot will be at any time between those two intervals of zero and one. Okay. Okay, so I brought this graph in. So I'm going to draw a picture that shows where the robot will be in at, at time zero. So at time zero, we're at zero, negative one. And that is right here. That is my starting point. A. Okay, and the end point after one minute time t equals one, we were at the point one, one. So over one, up one is right here. This is B. And that is the point one comma one. And this is the point zero comma negative one. Okay, so we have to go in a straight line. So now if I just go like so, and well, what is this? It's rise over run. So I can, let's do horizontal first. So if I go to the right, I'm going over one. And then I'm going up two. So this is a distance of one. And this is a distance of two. So if I go over a half, I have to go up one. So if I go over a half, I'm up one right here. So then I connect these dots. Let's use uh, green. So it's going to be the line through that point to there. And let me just fix that a little bit, All right? So, okay, so there it is. Starting at the point zero, negative one, going up, it's still off just a smidgen. Okay, that's better. All right, so there is where it will be at the time interval between zero to one. This green line is the path that it would take, a straight line with a slope of two. So I went from negative one to one, that's a distance of two, and I went right one. So up two over one, that is a slope of two. All right, so exercise one says, a robot is programmed to move along a straight path through two points A and B. It travels at a uniform speed that allows it to make a trip from A zero negative one to B one one in one minute. Find the robot's location P for each time in minutes T equals a quarter. Okay, so if our equation here is, what is my pen doing? 
if our equation is y equals mx plus b and our y-intercept is negative 1 and our slope was 2, then we have y equals 2x minus 1. So if x is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1, that gives me the point 0, negative 1. And then we keep doing that. Okay, so we want to attack this in the same fashion that we did the uh, prior lesson. And if you don't remember, it was you have a point and you use your starting point x sub one comma and the distance you go as a ratio of the total distance times the difference in your x2 minus your x1, which in this case is one minus zero. So we're just using the same formula from the last exercise. And then our y is going to be one. This shouldn't be a comma, it should be a plus. Let me fix that. It's zero plus a quarter times one minus zero, comma, y sub one here, I'm sorry, negative one, y sub one, plus that distance of a quarter times y sub two, one minus y sub one, which is negative one. So this is going to give us the point, one minus zero is one, one times a quarter is a quarter, plus zero is one quarter, comma, and then one minus a negative one is one plus one, which is two. Two times a quarter is two quarters or a half, plus a negative one. Negative one plus a half is negative one half. So if I went over to this now and I started here and I went over a quarter, which this is a half, a quarter would be halfway of that. If I went a quarter, I should be at the point one quarter, which is the X value here and negative one half, which is right there. So that's this point. So then if I continue this and I do part B, um, you can just do it with a fr um, fraction or you can do it with the decimal. I could make this a seven over 10 or I could just leave it as 0.7. So in this situation, we're going to take a or X sub one, which is zero plus 0 0.7 times x sub 2 minus x sub 1, which is 1 minus 0, comma, y sub 1, which is negative 1, times, oops, plus negative 1 plus 0 0.7 times y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So when I do this, I'm going to get 1 minus 0, which is 1, 1 times 0 0.7, which is 0 0.7, plus 0 is 0 0.7, comma. 1 minus negative 1 is 1 plus 1, which is 2. 2 times 0.7 is 1.4. Negative 1 plus 1.4 is 0 0.4. So any fraction or decimal we use, we can get a solution to this, and I can always check it with my graph I did up here. So if I went over 0 0.5 is here, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.91, these are increments of tenths, 0 0.7 is here, and go up 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and I am in fact on that path. Okay. Okay, page, what is this? Three, page three, page three. Okay, we're gonna continue here. So what we're going to do is take a parentheses, and remember the points. Let's just go back real quick. It's A, so let me just copy those over. A, zero, negative one. So I'll put these up here. A is zero comma negative one and B was the point one comma one. And I'm just making sure, yes, B is one, one. All right, so Y sub, or X sub one, zero plus the fraction that they gave us, the distance we want to go, five fourths, not five halves, five fourths times x sub two 
one minus x sub one, zero comma y sub one, negative one plus five fourths y sub two, which is one minus a negative one. So in doing this, I get one minus zero, which is one, one times five fourths is five fourths, five fourths plus zero is still five fourths, comma. One minus a negative one is two, that'd be 10 fourths, okay, 10 fourths, and minus four fourths would be six fourths, or one and one fourth, whatever way you wanna do it, and there it is. These could be reduced. That could be three halves. So if you if you wish, it doesn't matter. Five fourths comma three halves, one and a half. So five fourths, three halves. All right, next, t equals 2.2. .2. So x sub one, zero plus our distance times x sub two minus x sub one comma y sub one plus our distance 2.2 times y sub two, which is one minus negative one. So this is just repetition and changing the fraction or decimal right here. So this is gonna be one minus zero, which is one times 2.2, .2, which is 2.2 .2, comma, and then one plus one is two. So that'd be 4.4 minus one, which is 3.4. So 2.2 comma 3.4. And on to example two. Our robot has been reprogrammed so that it moves along the same straight line path through two points, A0, negative one, and B1, one, same points, at a uniform rate, but makes the trip in 0 0.6 minutes instead of one minute. How does this change the way we calculate the location of the robot at any time T? A, find the location P of the robot from example one. If the robot were traveling at a uniform speed, that allows it to make the trip from A to B in 0.6 minutes. Is the robot speed greater or less than the robot speed in example one? Well, if it did it quicker, it's probably... Okay, so first let's explain what we're doing here. Um, our initial time T, we can just call T. Okay, so now if we're going to do it in 0 0.6, um, we can think of this as the time, if the time used to be one, now we're doing it in 0 0.6, that'd be the same as saying one over six tenths. And that is going to equal one times the reciprocal of the denominator, which is going to equal 10 sixths or five thirds. So it's definitely going faster because this number is greater than one. Okay, so with that said, this is our fraction we're going to use like we did here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that P, some point, the location P of the robot is going to equal the starting point A sub one comma A sub two, if you will, A sub one comma A sub two, starting point plus five thirds times the amount of time it takes, parentheses, and then this formula up here. So it's going to be a sub one, I'm sorry, B sub one, B sub one minus A sub one, or X two minus X one. In this case, it'd be B sub one minus A sub one, and then comma, B sub two minus A sub two. So it would just simply be the same setup. So it'd be zero, a sub one, a sub two is zero, the point zero, zero, plus 2.2 .2 times one minus that zero, that's what these are right here, comma, one minus a negative one or plus one. So this right here, this 2.2 .2 would be this five thirds times time. So there is part A and the robot is moving faster. So they, to answer the question, the robot's moving faster because this is forcing it to go for sh further in a shorter period of time.
Okay, so now it's saying it took it one and a half minutes in this part B. It says find the location P of the robot from example one if the robot were traveling at a uniform. Oh, this is in my way. I can't read it. Let's move this up here. In a uniform speed that allowed it to make the trip from A to B in a minute and a half. Is robot speed greater or less than the robot speed from example one? All right, so again, if I think of my time as T divided by 1.5, Okay, 1.5 is one and five tenths. So think of it as that, T equals one and five tenths, if you will. And that's 10 times one is 10 plus five is 15 tenths. So this would be equal to T over 15 tenths. And therefore we could write it as T times the reciprocal 10 fifteenths which is going to reduce down to five goes into 10 twice, 15 three times, so it's going to be two thirds T. All right, so now I'm going to write my formula. So some point P is going to equal the A sub one comma A sub two plus two thirds times the time of B sub one minus A sub one comma B sub two minus A sub two and the robot is going at a less speed because it's only going two thirds of the distance in the same amount of time. Okay, page three brings us to exercise two. And it says two robots are moving along straight line paths in a rectangular room. So my rectangular room is going to be my first quadrant. And so I graph these for you to, to give you a picture of what's going on here. So <clears throat> A is the point 2010, 2010. Since this is 20, halfway is 10. So these are um, four each, four, eight, 16. No, they're not, just kidding. Are they? Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Yes, they are, they're four each. So four, eight, and then 10 would be halfway between eight and 12. So that's what our scale is here. And then going this way, one, two, three, four, five gets us 20. So that's four as well. So these little squares are four by fours, just to get the idea of the scale. So this is 2010A. And I'm just making sure these are all correct. B is 120 comma 50, which is halfway between 40 and 60, that's correct. C is 90, 10, and D is 60, 70. So robot one starts here. So robot one, robot one will be in red. So I'll draw a segment in red, goes from point A to point B, like so. So there's robot one. Okay, alrighty, so robot one is the red line and then robot two, I'll do in blue. Robot two starts at point C and goes to D. Forgot to choose my segment tool and color blue. So we're going from C up to D like so. Let me just move this a little bit. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. It's tough to do with a stylus. There, that's pretty good right there. <laughs> okay, so it says find the location P of robot one, so that's the red, after it has traveled for time T minutes along its path from A to B. Okay, so any general, it's a general um, uh, formula or location for any value T. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're gonna say the point is going to be P and P is going to equal X sub one, which is 20, plus some ratio of time divided by how long it's going to take it. So it'd be T divided by two parentheses, and then it's going to be x sub two minus x sub one. So point A, let me just underline all of these so we're looking at the right thing. 
and this is x sub one, y sub one, and b is x sub two, y sub two. So my t 20 is x sub one plus some time t divided by how long it takes, which is two minutes, times x sub two minus x sub one comma y sub one 10 plus some time t divided by the length of time it took which was two minutes times y2 50 minus 10. and then when i simplify that i am going to get the point 20 plus t over 2 times 100 comma 10 plus t over 2 times 40. Okay, so then I could factor out this t over 2 from the y's. So my point is then going to become 20 comma 10 plus factor out the t over 2 and we get the from the point 100 comma 40. Okay, so I took my x's and put them together, or my x and my y, my starting point, if you will. And then we're going to add some ratio, some time divided by two, and then the distance difference, 120 minus 20, 50 minus 10. That's where that comes up. So there is the formula that they were asking for. There we go. Okay. All right. So that's A. Now, what does B say? B says, here, let me move this out of the way. Let me put this over here. Okay. Now, B says, find the location Q. All right. Let's use, I don't know. Uh, let's use green. Now we're going to find the location Q. Robot two it says find the location Q of robot two starting at C 190.10. So I'm going to call that X sub one, Y sub one, and ending up at D, which is my X sub two, Y sub two. So this is my finish point. I don't want to cover it up. So I'll just put a line over it just so we can see that's what we're dealing with. So here is, and here's the time, 90 seconds. Well, 90 seconds in terms of minutes, because this was two minutes, 90 seconds is 1.5 minutes. Okay. So we need to use that. Okay. So once I do that, it says find the location Q of robot two after it's traveled for T minutes long path from C to D. So Q is going to equal X sub one 90 plus some T over the length of time it took, which is 1.5 minutes times X sub two 60 minus X sub one 90 comma my Y sub one of 10 plus some t over 1.5 times y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So this is going to make q equal to 90 plus t over 1.5. 60 minus 90 is negative 30, comma 10 plus t over 1.5. 0.5 times 70 minus 10. Okay, and that's what I got similar to here, but then I can put my x, y together. So this is going to simplify out to be my starting point, 90 comma 10 plus t over 1.5 times the point negative 30 comma 60 factoring out that T over 
Okay, so there is the equation to find the point P and the equation to find the location Q, given those time parameters. Okay, part C says, are the robots traveling at the same speed? And if they're not, which robot's speed is greater? So what do I wanna find? Well, I wanna find the length of AB. Okay, and I wanna find the length of CD. And distance formula says that AB is going to equal the square root of the difference in our y's squared plus the difference in our x's squared or the difference in our x's squared plus the difference in our y's squared, whatever. Okay, since we're adding, it doesn't matter. Uh, so 20, 120, that's a difference of, so if I wrote that, it would be 120 minus 20 squared plus, okay, 120 minus 20, and then 50 minus 10 squared. So when I do that, I get AB equals the square root of 100 squared plus 40 squared. So AB is going to equal one with four zeros, which is 10,000, plus four times four is 16 with two zeros. So AB is going to equal 10,100 or 11,600, I mean. The square root of 11,600. And then uh, since we're at it, how about we simplify the radical and by doing a factor tree. So two goes into 11, five times, two goes into 16, eight times and two zeros. Okay, and then we do it again and two goes into five twice, two goes into 18, nine, there's two zeros. And again, two goes into two once, two goes into nine, four times, two goes into 10, five times and a zero. And then again, two goes into 14, seven times, two goes into 52, five. And then again, now that's not a two anymore, so now I can factor out a five. Five goes into seven once, 22, four times, 25, five times, again, Five goes into 14 twice, 45 is nine, nine times five is 45. We are done, that's prime. Here's our prime factorization. We have a pair of twos. We have another pair of twos. We have a pair of fives. We have a lonely 29. So then that just simply means two times two times five square root 29. Well, that's four times five, which is 20 square root 29. Okay, they're simplifying the radical. That was just a quick review of that. I like to review from time to time. Okay, so now I'm just gonna move this over here. Okay. And then what is 20 square root 29? Okay, 20 square root 29. Enter, and it's approximately 107.7. So AB is approximately, so this would be AB equals AB equals, but then once we do an approximation, we have to say approximately. So it's approximately 107.7, that's the length. So let's, let's do the same for CD now. And let me move this out of the way. So now we're going to do CD. So, hello, CD equals the square root. Okay, CD, here's C, here's D, 90, 60, parentheses, 60 minus 90 squared plus 70 minus 10 squared. So CD, is going to equal negative 30 squared plus 60 squared. So CD is going to equal 
three times 30 times 30 is 900. I don't need a parenthesis anymore because squaring it will get rid of the negative. So I'll just now put 900 plus 60 times 60. Six times six is 36 and two zeros. So CD is going to equal the square root of 4,500. And now I'm going to do a factor tree. Two goes into four twice, goes into five twice, goes into 10 five times and a zero. Two goes into two once, goes into two once, goes into five twice, goes into 10 five times. Now I go down to a five because it ends in five. Five goes into 11 twice, five goes into 12 twice, five goes into top five, five times, five again. Five goes into 22 four times with a remainder of two, five goes into 25 five times, and 45 is five times nine. I have a pair of twos, I have a pair of fives. I have a single from five and nine. So that is going to become two times five, square root five times nine, okay? And that's how you simplify a radical. I'm not done, just give me a moment to get rid of this. And let me line this up to here. And that is going to be CD equals, and then simplify that five times two, nine times five. And then get the approximation from my calculator. Okay, so 10 root 45, And it's 6.708, so approximately 6.6, 6, whoops, did I do that right? No, I forgot my, that's a one, okay. 10 square root 45. So it's gonna move the decimal, 67.1. Okay, so, as the robots, are the robots traveling at the same speed? No. So let me bring this explanation in. Okay, so robot one is traveling at 107.7 units per two minutes, which is about 53.85 units per minute. Okay, divide that by two. Robot two travels approximately 67.1 units in 1.5 minutes. So divide that by 1.5 and you get 44.7 units per minute. Therefore, robot one is going faster. 53 units per minute, 44 units per minute. Okie dokie. Okay. Okay, so cleaning that up and bringing in D, are the straight line paths that the robots are traveling parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Explain your answer. Well, I drew the diagram for you here, so we know they are not parallel, but are they perpendicular? That is the question. So let's take a look. Okay, so in order for those to be perpendicular, we have to take the slope of AB and it has to equal the reciprocal negative of the slope of CD, if you will. Okay, um, so we're going to find the slopes. So what is AB slope? Well, slope is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So slope is 120 minus 20 over, no, I'm sorry, that is the axis. Let's erase that. Y2 minus Y1, 50 minus 10. Over X2, 120 minus 20. That is going to give me 40 over 100, or 4 tenths or 2 fifths. So now I want to find the slope of CD and the slope of CD is Y2, 70 minus Y1, 10 divided by X2, 60 minus X1, 90. And that is going to equal 60 over negative 30. So these reduce to negative or six over negative three, which reduces to negative two over one, if you will. This reduces to two fifths. And obviously two fifths is not equal to negative five halves. This should be negative five halves, or this should be 
one half. So the answer is neither. Okay, next page, page five, bring us to example three. And it says a programmer wants to program a robot so that it moves at a constant speed, a long and straight line. So the key here is it's constant speed. That's always easier than a varying speed. And it's going along a straight line. So that makes it easier too. a straight line segment connecting the points A to the point B over a course of one minute. At time t equals zero, the robot is at point A. And at time t equals one, the robot's at point B. Okay? All right. So I'm just color coding these just to make it easier. And this is my x sub one, y sub one, x sub two, y sub two. So let's label that. I'll just put it up here x sub one, y sub one, x sub two, y sub two. And it says, where will the robot be at time t equals a half? So there's the key here. That is our ratio that we're going to put in our formula. Okay, so where's the robot at time t equals a half? Well, we're going to use this formula. So you take x sub one plus this ratio of time times x sub two, x sub two, 200 minus x sub one, which is 30, comma, y sub one, 60, plus our time ratio of a half times y sub two, 100 minus y sub one, 60. Simplifying this, I will get 30 plus 200 minus 30 is 170. Half of 170 is 85, okay? Half of that, comma, 60 plus 100 minus 60 is 40, half of 40 is 20. So the point it is going to be at, at time t equals a half would be 115, comma, 80. Okay, part B, where will the robot be at time t equals 0.6? Okay, in this situation, you could leave it like this, but I'm going to call that 6 tenths, and 6 tenths reduces to 3 fifths. So my t could be 0.6 or 6 tenths or 3 fifths. I will use the 3 fifths. So now we write this formula again, and it's y1 or x1, x1 plus my ratio of three fifths of my finishing point x sub two, which is 200 minus x sub one, 30. 200 minus 30. So it's the same formula here, we're just changing the half to three fifths, comma. And it's y sub one, 60, plus my ratio of three fifths times y two, 100, minus y1, 60. This is going to give me 30 plus, let's just do this all step by step because it's 3 fifths and not just a half. 200 minus 30 is 170, comma, 60 plus 3 fifths of 100 minus 60 or 40, okay? Um, so then what we're going to do here is we're going to take 30 plus, and now five, three fifths of 170, five goes into 17 three times. And the remainder of two, and so that'd be 34 and 34 times three. So let me make sure my calculation is correct. And that should give me 102, but let me check. So if I do three divided by five times 170, it is 102. Just wanted to make sure. Comma, five goes into 48 times, eight times three is 24. So that'd be 60 plus 24. 30 plus 102 is 132. 60 plus 24 is 84. 
So the robot will be at the point 132, 84.6 uh, seconds, 0. 0.6 of a minute, six tenths of a minute. So a tenth of a minute is six seconds, 0. 0.6, six times six, that'd be 36 seconds. Okay. Okay, page six brings us to the end of lesson 14. Go do your problem set.